bring in Charles Barkley, who joins us. Chuck, how are you this morning? I'm good, my brother. How you doing? I'm doing okay. I, I just, I'm a little, I don't know why I'm bothered by this Ben Simmons situation at LSU, and there'll be a new Ben Simmons next year, but just sort of going through the motions, and I just think college college itself looks bad. College basketball looks bad. Is there a way? Or- no, it's all, well, no, it's not that the kid looks bad. He can't go to college for one year and, and bust his hump. You know, if you think about those kids last year at Kentucky, they were trying to go undefeated. They, you know, they know they were only going to be there for one year, but they wanted to accomplish something special. I mean, he just went through the motions. I didn't like that at all. But if you made him stay two years, then he's going not going through the motions. He has to he has to stay eligible, and th- and that's why coming out of high school, Ben Simmons wants to go pro. I'm, I'm all for that. Go get him. But well, if you, if you, well, the problem is that it's running the NBA. The NBA is the worst it's ever been. If you go back and look, we probably got five or six teams worth. Uh, I was having a conversation with a couple of NBA people the other day. Dan, and I want you to be honest with me. Okay. How many NBA teams would you actually buy season tickets for right now? Four or five. That's it. And we can't keep going like that uh, because I don't think we charge these fans outrageous sums of money. It's disrespectful for them to get a guy who's not ready to play, and he might be a good player in four or five years. That doesn't help me as a fan, and it doesn't help me from a guy on television where, like, unless I'm getting the, uh, the Clippers, Golden State, the Spurs, Oklahoma City, or the Cavaliers, I'll even throw uh, Toronto, and I might even throw the Celtics in there. Mm -hmm. Unless I'm getting one of those seven teams, I'm not going to, like, this is not fun for me to watch. And I think it's not fun for our fans. We're drafting kids who are not ready to play in the NBA. I think if they stayed for two years, number one, they'd have to go to class. But also I think they'd be mentally and physically stronger and come in ready to play. Because I think there's a big difference in six months, which is what they're doing now. If you have to stay and work out and get better as a player for two years, I think there's a huge difference than than just going to college for six months and and coming to the NBA and you're not ready. But you know the pressure you would have faced. You stayed three years at Auburn. If, If you did that now, then people question your abilities if you stay that long. First of all, I hate that argument, Dan. I hate that argument. But but you know it exists. The world. Wait a minute. Uh, Steph Curry, it's a, him and uh, Kawhi Leonard and LeBron. LeBron's a cap. Uh, he's uh, take him out, but he's just amazing. But you got two uh, the two best players in the NBA today. It really didn't hurt them that staying in college a couple of years, did it? No, but the perception is. That you're no, this... there's no perception. Yeah, there no, is. That's what they keep telling. That's what they keep telling you. Think about it. The two best players in the NBA in the world today, and like I say, I think Kawhi Leonard's the best player in the world. I think Steph Curry's the best offensive player in the world. Those guys stayed in college more than one year. How bad did it hurt them? No, it benefited them. I, I'm in agreement with you. I think the problem is their inner circle that says, "Hey, you got to go." You know, leave now. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, your your family and friends and your agent, they're scumbags. They just <laughs> want your cash. You know, there's a reason 80% of professional athletes go broke, Dan, because your family and your friends are in a hurry to get it. Yeah. They, of course they want you to go pro and get it. If if there was an open draft and I said you can take Steph Curry or Kawhi Leonard, you're taking Kawhi Leonard? I'm taking Kawhi Leonard. He's the best all-around player in the mm-hmm. NBA. I mean, I, he can get me a basket, and he can guard anybody out on the floor. And that's not a knock on Steph. If you have to watch the games, when they have a terrific point guard, Clay Thompson has to guard that guy. Steph is the best offensive player in the world. But the best all-around player in the world today is Kawhi Leonard. I've been saying that for the last three or four months, and he is. He's Charles Barkley. Let me give him the uh, full introduction here. TBS will televise the final four national semifinals on Saturday, April 2nd. And uh, Monday, April 4th, I'll be in Houston, by the way, in case you care, Charles. I'll be there for the Final Four weekend. Oh, you know, can you get your little alligator arms and buy me a meal one night? Can you reach in your pocket one night? I mean, them little alligator arms, 
It's been a long time, Dan, since you paid for a meal. Now you got your own show and everything. You're all over TV. Why don't you buy, buy a check one time? Well, it looks like somebody's buying you some meals. Hey, listen, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, that's called success, man. Oh, is that what that is? <laughs> that's called success. Uh, how are you and the touchscreen doing? I want to know how that relationship's going. You can't touch the touchscreen, but you have to touch it and move quickly right away. Oh, I know. I know. You can't. I know. Oh, you're like they're like. You you can't touch it. You got to touch it for a split <laughs> second and move. I'm like, dude, y'all are making this thing really hard. It's just basketball. We're not saving the world. Did you practice the touch screen before Selection Sunday? Oh uh, yeah, we practiced a little bit, but you know when they say touch it and don't touch it, move right away. <laughs> I'm not really going crazy over it. Uh, you know, you got it. You got it, it's fun though. I mean, it's fun. You know, I, I will tell you, you know, because this is the one thing you can't screw up in the world is March Madness because it's the coolest mm-hmm. time of the year. Uh, and this tournament, to me, is going to be probably the most exciting. I'm not saying that because we're broadcasting it. You know, everybody, I think it is a little different. Everybody says there's a lot of teams that can win it. I don't think there's a lot of teams that can win it, but I think there's going to be a lot of upsets early in the tournament. Yeah, there's a lot of parity there. I think you know, you look at it's a little top heavy with Kansas, North Carolina, Michigan State, those kind of schools that are that are usually there at, at the end. It's always fun. I, I just but those, but those other teams, but those other teams in the middle, those was going to be really exciting. Like I say, I still I went I went with North Carolina, Michigan State, Oregon, and and Kansas, and I picked Michigan State to win it. But you look at some of the first round games, Friday and Saturday. Uh, excuse me, Thursday and Friday, you're like, I have no idea who's going to win that game. So th- that's what's going to make Thursday and Friday remarkable. Uh, let me uh, – uh, so you have Michigan State winning it all? I do. Okay. I think that guy's the best coach. Uh, not the best coach, but he's just amazing. I got – you know, obviously, you know, Krzyzewski and Bill Self and Roy Williams – that day, hey, I tell you what, that day, I watched that uh, Wichita State. That boy can really coach. I mean, he's using ineligible players because there's no way in the world <laughs> Beth Fleet and Baker only been in college for four years. I, you know, there's no way those guys only been in college for four years. But that guy can really coach. Uh, so I, I'm really looking forward to getting this thing started. A couple other things here. Finish this sentence. If Phil Jackson decides to coach the Knicks home games, Uh, it would make a mockery of the coaching profession. Uh, You know, I love Phil Jackson for what he's accomplished, but, you know, Dan, you can't do that. Uh, It it would be making a mockery of the coaching profession. Uh, That's how I finished that statement. Uh, The worst part of filming the uh, Capital One commercials with Samuel L. Jackson and Spike Lee was what? There's no worst part. Sam Jackson is the coolest celebrity in the world, and Spike is a terrific uh, director. But there's no, there's nothing bad with working with Sam Jackson. I get excited every time I get to work with him. I mean, he's the coolest celebrity. Uh, he's probably the coolest. You know how you? Oh, uh, well, you know who else in that conversation? Jack Nicholson. You know how you meet somebody and you're like, man, I hope they're as cool as they look. Yep. I will say this: Sam Jackson and Jack Nicholson. Every time you see them, they're going to be the coolest celebrities in the room. Everybody want to hang with them and be be around them. Did Spike ever uh, say he'd put you in his movies, or are you in uh, He Got I Game? Did, right? I did. I, I I did. I did a cameo okay. in He Got Game. Yeah. yeah. And what about Samuel L? Did he ever say, "Hey, you know what? Maybe I could put you in a movie." Well, I mean, he's probably, I'm trying to think. I don't think in his movies he really had no really good-looking, big, sexy black guy, if I can remember correctly. <laughs> so I, I, I'm typecast, Dan. I'm typecast with this really good-looking sex symbol. Well, I think he wants to cast Shaq. That's why. If he need a big goofball, <laughs> uh, he, 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 he puts the bill. <laughs> I, I'm still amazed how goofy Shaq it was. Was Shaq goofy when he played, though? You know, he he's always been funny. He he's just a big kid, 
And, you know, me and Kevin McHale talk about it all the time. When the first time you see Shaq, you're like, that guy can't play basketball. Because Shaq, you know, I played against Mark Eden, Mutombo, guys like that, Manu Bo. Yao Ming. But Shaq is, the, uh, y- yes, but Shaq is the only guy because, like, those other guys were kind of plotting. But Shaq, when we always say, the well, first time you see Shaq, Shaq, you're like, yeah, I think it's about time to retire right now. Big fella. <laughs> Me and Mikhail, because he told Robert Paris that the first time, that he's the chief, it's about time for us to pack it in. And when the first time I saw Shaquille in person, I was like, damn, that's a big dude. And he's athletic. He can run. I know. That's the thing that's amazing. I mean, the big, and, I've, and I've said this before. You know, you see all these big guys who break down, who have bad feet and bad knees. You know, we had so many of those. And Shaq is bigger than all those guys. I think the fact that he was able to play in the NBA for 18 years is one of the most amazing physical things I've ever seen. I mean, because all the other big guys, they broke down. And he was bigger than them guys. For him to play as long as he did and be as great as he was, I think that's one of the most amazing physical accomplishments ever. So we'll be in Houston. Don't be afraid to stop by, and uh, we'll, we'll be in there. I, I have a basketball court that uh, I, I'm going to have built just to see if any anybody wants to come by and play. Oh, you know, last time I played against you, Dan, you were choking like a dog. When you did the little cameo with us, you were choking like a dog. You get that apple out of your throat. What, what cameo? Remember in the movie, you did a thing with us one time. You don't remember? What What movie? It wasn't. It was like I guess it was like some special we were doing, and I you choked, were bragging about how good you were in college. No, I never said that. I just said I I'm going to take your lunch money, which I'm probably sure I did. <laughs> Dan, you you know what? Just because I will admit that you had a pretty little jump shot, but you never would have been able to get it off. Yeah, that's what they said. That's what they said about uh, Steph Curry when he was at Davidson. Wait a minute, you don't think when well, he changed his shot number one the first of all, now you're comparing yourself to Steph Curry? Or the other way around. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Dan, I want to say this. As a basketball player, you're a great broadcaster. Thank you. Thank you. Uh you know, I good luck with the uh, touch screen and uh hopefully I'll see you in, in Houston. <laughs> All right, my brother, you take care. <laughs> Thank Tell you. Tell the other nerds I said hello. I will. I will. They all say hello. That's Charles Barkley. 